In today's video, we are going to learn about the pond ecosystem, as well as the birds that live here. But first, it's important to know what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a community of interacting organisms in an environment. Now, all these parts of the ecosystem are really important. And if one part was removed, then the ecosystem would not be balanced and therefore the environment would suffer. A pond ecosystem is similar to land ecosystems as they both have plants as the base which all higher levels depend on. However, in ponds, these plants have adaptations that allow them to live in and underwater. Algae are similar to plants and are small microscopic organisms that provide crucial food and oxygen. All the other life in the pond, like insects, frogs, fish, and birds, rely on the health of these primary producers. Birds are found at higher levels of the food chain because their diets range from insects to frogs and to fish. Large birds that eat fish are usually found at the top of the pond food chain. Now we're going to learn about some characteristic species that you can find around a pond. An osprey and a great blue heron are two common birds around the pond and you can find them preying on fish. Great blue herons are around North America all year long and in Ontario in the summertime. They use their long legs to stalk on fish and frogs. And great blue herons make their nests high up in trees, sometimes in groups up to 500. Ponds also provide a lot of habitat for species at risk, like the least bittern. The least bittern is a small heron that is threatened in Ontario. That means if significant action isn't taken to conserve this species, it will become endangered. Now you can usually find them along the edges of ponds in tall vegetation, hunting large insects, fish, and frogs. They're 2.25 inches wide, but they can compress their bodies to 1.5 inches in order to get to their prey without being heard. That's incredible. Unfortunately, there are also invasive bird species that take over pond ecosystems. An invasive species means that it dominates the habitat and makes it unbalanced. This is usually because they're from a different place. One example of this is a mute swan, which is from both Europe and Asia and has extremely aggressive behaviors and extensive appetites. Here you can see a mute swan is showing a display of aggression by raising its wings. This aggressive nature means that they can outcompete native swans for food and habitat. They forage in a dabbling style and can eat up to eight pounds of aquatic plants in a single day. Now we are gonna learn more about identifying waterfowl by splitting them into two categories, dabblers and divers. Now this might not be helpful for identifying all waterfowl, but will especially be helpful when identifying ducks or swans. Now dabblers and divers have distinct flight patterns and eating habits. A dabbler will take off straight from the water, whereas a diver will patter along the surface to pick up speed and then take off. In this video, you will see a mute swan. Like Jim mentioned, a mute swan is a dabbler. Dabblers will dump their heads under when they're looking for food, but keep their bottoms up. Now you see a loon. A loon is a diver. It will take the plunge, swimming underneath the water looking for its food. Now that you know the difference between a dabbler and a diver, you can spot their behaviors easily when you're at a pond. Hopefully this can help you learn more about identifying birds. It's important to mention that some birds that are found in the pond ecosystem can also be found elsewhere. For example, both tree and barn swallows catch insects while they're flying through the air. Now that means that they're going wherever the insects are. So not only are in the pond ecosystem, but they're also in the grasslands. Here you can see that these birds are so acrobatic in flight that they will pick insects off the top of the pond. This is just one example of how birds cross over between ecosystems. It's time for conservation considerations. In this segment, we hope to inspire you by sharing what Arasha is doing at Cedar Haven to care for God's creation through conservation. Here at Cedar Haven, we are working to naturalize the pond in order to create healthy habitats for all wildlife. Due to the fact that this pond is man-made, we have many opportunities to improve the habitat quality here. For example, the water is usually too warm and there's a lot of invasive plant species. So some steps that we're taking to combat this are monitoring the water quality, planting native plants, and removing invasive species. 
We mentioned earlier that an ecosystem has a lot of parts, and each are vital to the survival of that environment. The hope that by restoring water quality and plant life, we can create habitats for creatures that are at a higher level in the ecosystem, like birds, and hopefully we can all find habitats here. We hope you enjoyed watching this video and learned about birds that you can find in a pond ecosystem. Birds are crucial to virtually every ecosystem. We hope that by learning about them, your curiosity will grow and we can work together to conserve these important creatures.